Let's transition to the NFC. It's the four versus five matchup in the NFC. It's the Dallas Cowboys favored by two and a half points traveling to Tampa Bay to take on Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. It's an 815 kickoff on ESPN. The over under for this game is 45 and a half points. It's Dak Prescott. It's Tom Brady. It's CeeDee Lamb. It's Mike Evans. Let's break down this matchup between these two teams. Now, these two teams played against each other week one. So a very, very long time ago in Dallas, the Buccaneers beat the Cowboys 19 to 13. That was the game where Dak Prescott got injured in that game. He wasn't doing much before he got injured, though. They were already struggling. But in that game, Tom Brady went 18 of 27. He threw for 212 passing yards, one touchdown, one interception. Leonard Fournette had 21 carries, 127 rushing yards, no touchdowns. For the Cowboys, Prescott went 14 of 29. He threw for 134 passing yards, one interception. And Cooper Rush went 7 of 13. He threw for 64 passing yards. That's where Prescott injured his thumb. So that was a long time ago. Very, very long time ago. So this matchup between these two teams is going to be epic. And I want to start off with the Cowboys because when it comes to the Dallas Cowboys, obviously they are led by head coach Mike McCarthy. And I believe that if the Cowboys get upset in this game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who are 8-9, and and if they weren't in the NFC South, the worst division in the NFL, they wouldn't even be in the playoffs. Wouldn't even be in the playoffs. If Mike McCarthy doesn't find a way to coach his team to victory Monday night in Tampa, I believe Jerry Jones will fire Mike McCarthy and the Dallas Cowboys will be in the Sean Payton sweepstakes. I think that's why we haven't seen Sean Payton accept a head coaching gig yet because I think he's waiting to see what Jerry Jones is going to do with Mike McCarthy. Remember last year, the Cowboys, they were at home against the 49ers. They were the three seed in the NFC. They were the favorites. And they lost that game against the 49ers and Jimmy Garoppolo. And that was a bad loss for that Cowboys football team. And last year, they were the most penalized team in the NFL. And... They had a lot of penalties even in the preseason this year. And so people had questions about Mike McCarthy when it comes to whether or not he actually has a disciplined football team. That's what your main job is as a head coach. You have to make sure that your football team is a team that doesn't have unnecessary penalties and they don't put themselves in position to lose games because of penalties. Also. They are a team that doesn't do well with time management. Remember last year on the last drive of the game, Cowboys were trying to score a touchdown to beat the 49ers, and they ran a quarterback sneak with Dak Prescott up the middle. They didn't have much time left on the clock, no timeouts, and they weren't able to spike the ball in time enough to be able to run another play. That's on Mike McCarthy. So, he has a very, very undisciplined football team, and they also don't do well in managing the clock in key moments in football games. So that's why I had to start off with, if Mike McCarthy doesn't get it done and the Cowboys lose this game, I believe Jerry Jones will make a change. Now, I know Jerry Jones said he's going to stick with Mike McCarthy. I don't believe Jerry Jones one bit. I don't believe him one bit. Jerry Jones wants to win another Super Bowl, and if Mike McCarthy has another early playoff exit, I believe that he will be fired sometime this week. But when we look at Dak Prescott this year, Dak Prescott got 23 touchdowns, 15 interceptions, 2,860 passing yards. He's completed 66% of his passes. But Dak Prescott has been a turnover machine this year. You look at Dak Prescott in his interceptions. This was 2016 through 2021, 
his percentage of attempts was 1.7. And he, in 17 games, he had 10 interceptions. This year, his percentage of attempts increased. This year is 3.8. And in 17 games, he got 21 interceptions. So he had 15 interceptions this season. So he's turned the ball over way, way too much for this Cowboys offense to be effective. Now, offensively, we know they have Ezekiel Elliott in the backfield. They also got Tony Pollard. I believe Tony Pollard is the number one running back on this football team for the season. Tony Pollard has 193 carries, 1,007 rushing yards, nine touchdowns. But Ezekiel Elliott is their power back. So when they get into the red zone, they hand the ball out to Zeke. Zeke got 12 total touchdowns during the regular season. So he's their power back. But Tony Pollard is better than Ezekiel Elliott overall. I know Ezekiel Elliott has the contract, but Tony Pollard is more productive in this Cowboys offense than Zeke is. Now, the receivers, they are led by CeeDee Lamb. CeeDee Lamb is on the come up as a receiver in the NFL. And this year, the goal for CeeDee Lamb was to prove that he could be a number one receiver in this Cowboys offense with the departure of Amari Cooper. C.D. Lamb this year, 107 receptions, 1,359 receiving yards, nine touchdowns this year. So I believe he's their number one receiver, and he's the most reliable option for Dak Prescott. I think that's who Dak Prescott trusts the most in the passing game. I want to see which other receiver can step up in this Cowboys offense to be a consistent number two receiver. They did sign T.Y. Hilton, the veteran receiver. So I want to see what if he can produce in this Cowboys offense. You still got Michael Gallup. You still got Brown at receiver as well. And in that tight end, you still got Dalton Schultz. So I want to see who can step up and be that consistent number two receiver for this Cowboys offense. Now, defensively, we know that they are led by defensive coordinator Dan Quinn. And the best player on the Cowboys football team overall is Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons this year has 14 sacks. 14 sacks. He's the second coming of Lawrence Taylor. He is a dominant football player. You still got Demarcus Lawrence up front. At linebacker, you got Van Der Esch. And you still got Anthony Barr at linebacker as well. They're secondary, though. That's the, that's the one part of their defense that's the weakness to me. I know Trayvon Diggs is big time. And I expect Trayvon Diggs to be matched up with Mike Evans. Mike Evans is the number one receiver for the Buccaneers. Trayvon Diggs is going to get that opportunity to match up against Mike Evans. But... Ever since they lost their other corner, the Cowboys haven't been very good. They have not been very good, and opposing teams know that the opposite side of Diggs is the weakness in the Cowboys' defense. So defensively, the Cowboys, we look at their statistics overall, they, have, they only give up 201 passing yards per game. That's ranked eighth in the NFL. They only give up 20 total points per game. That's tied for fifth in the NFL. But you can run against that Cowboys defense. They give up 129 rushing yards per game. That's ranked 22nd in the NFL. But the problem is the Cowboys' weakness is the Buccaneers' weakness because the Buccaneers cannot run the football. They are a one-dimensional football team. The Buccaneers, they average 77 rushing yards per game. That's ranked dead last in the NFL. Dead last. So they can't run the football at all. Leonard Fournette this year got 189 carries, 668 rushing yards. He doesn't even have 1,000 yards rushing this year. So like, I want to say the Buccaneers could expose the Cowboys because of their inability to stop the run, but the Buccaneers don't have a good running game at all. At all. They are a one-dimensional football team, and they rely on Tom Brady. 
Tom Brady this year, 25 touchdowns, nine interceptions, 4,694 passing yards. So we know how great Tom Brady is in the postseason. He, again, 35 career playoff wins for Tom Brady. Only the Packers, Steelers, and Patriots have more playoff wins than Tom Brady. So when you look at the quarterbacks in this matchup, I'm going with Tom Brady over Dak Prescott. And this is why I believe the Buccaneers have a chance to pull off the upset. But one of the keys is going to be that matchup between Mike Evans and Trayvon Diggs. Whoever wins that matchup, I believe that team will win this football game. I believe that team will win the game, whoever wins that matchup between those, those two players. And, you know, Tom Brady, he looks for Mike Evans in key moments because no one else in this Buccaneers team has been as consistent as Mike Evans has been. Now, Chris Godwin this year, he got 104 receptions, over 1,000 receiving yards, three touchdowns, but he hasn't had the impact that Mike Evans has had. He, he, he just hasn't. I still think Chris Godwin can be a solid contributor to this Buccaneers offense in the passing game, and I think that's what it's going to take for the Buccaneers to pull off the upset over the Dallas Cowboys. You look at the Buccaneers offensively, they average 270 passing yards per game. That's ranked second in the NFL. So it's going to be important for – the, the Buccaneers to be able to rely on Tom Brady to win this game for them because they don't have a running game to speak of whatsoever. Now, obviously, they are led by head coach Todd Bowles and Byron Leftwich is their offensive coordinator. I, I'm interested to see their game plan in this game because the Cowboys, they don't do well at stopping the run, but the, the, the Buccaneers don't have a running game at all. And – this is a game where the Cowboys, they are the favorites. They have the better football team, and they've had a better season this year than the Buccaneers have had. They have all the pressure on them as we head into this matchup on Monday Night Football. I mean, the Buccaneers, honestly, they're playing with house money at this point. They're playing with house money because they weren't even expected to be here considering they had an 8-9 record. They barely won the NFC South. So uh, this is dangerous for the Cowboys. But with all that being said, I I'm going to roll with the Cowboys. I'm going to roll with the Cowboys to beat the Bucks in Tampa. It's going to be high scoring. I'm going Dak Prescott, 28, Tom Brady, 27. That's my prediction. I'm rolling with the Cowboys to beat the Buccaneers in Tampa, 28-27. I think it's going to be a great game, though. I really, and it wouldn't shock me. It wouldn't shock me one bit if the Buccaneers upset the Cowboys. Wouldn't shock me one bit. So, everybody, go follow Wise Guys on Twitter at WiseGuys underscore H. Also on Facebook, Wise Guys, And be sure to follow Wise Guys on Instagram at These Guys Know Sports.